it's just setting up. I think a countdown of five, four, three, two, one. <clears throat> Hello Facebook, I am so deeply excited for this very, very special live that we're doing today with none other than Gaur Gopal Das. Now this is a really important and momentous occasion for me because I'm sitting down with a dear friend, a guide, a mentor, someone that I've known in my life for over 15 years. And the most amazing thing is not that he's been an international bestseller with his incredible books, not that he's been an internet sensation with hundreds of millions of views, but that he's done all of this whilst being a monk living in India for the last 25 years. He's traveled across the world, spoken at some of the biggest institutions and coached and guided people from all different backgrounds and walks of life. And today we have access to all of this wisdom through his incredible new book called The Way of the Monk, which was released just a week ago in the United States. And I'm gonna be sharing the link to this book in the comment section so that you can pick it up if you're enjoying this conversation. And I'd like to welcome the one and only Gor Gopaldas. Gor Gopaldas, thank you so much for doing this. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jay. It's such an absolute pleasure, you know, friends for over 15 years now, and I'm just so delighted and grateful. Thank you so much for having me over for this conversation in regards to the book, The Way of the Monk. So very, very grateful and excited to be with you, Jay. Thank you. Now, this is truly an amazing opportunity for all of us to hear from you. Just so that everyone knows, it's currently 9 a.m., around after 9 a.m. in L.A., which means that it's currently around 9.40 p.m. in India. That's right. Uh, yes. We have kindly requested Gorgopaldas to stay awake so that we could do this. So... I'm extremely grateful that he's done that for us. And Gorgopaldas, I'd love to start with this question for you. Uh, you've been a monk for a significant amount of time, but just like me, when I share my journey, I wasn't on the path to become a monk. I thought I was going to yeah. work in business or finance or consulting. Tell us about what your path in life looked like and then where the change in the path came about. Yeah. So Jay, when I graduated out of university, I studied electrical engineering. And then when I started my job with HP, I was decently good at it, but then I didn't find myself fit in. I didn't find myself really happy and satisfied with what I was doing. And I thought to myself, hey, if I'm working for about eight hours a day and I'm working for about five days a week, that makes it 40 hours a week. And if I'm working for 50 weeks a year, that makes us 2,000 hours a year. And if I'm working for at least 45 years, that makes it 90,000 precious hours of my life at something that I don't enjoy, at something that I don't really like. So then I asked myself, what do I like? You know, And that's when I realized I'm a people's person. I love to work with people. I love to deal with people. I love to study life. And then I thought, how do I kind of now uh, get my hands over understanding life? But that is when I thought, what if I combine my spiritual calling and my not fitting in and my sense of purpose, putting it all together? I don't fit into my regular job. I don't like it, although I'm okay with it. And then I have a calling for myself to explore spirituality. And then I also want to do something in the area of people learning life, studying life. And that's how I think I decided, hey, look, let me give it a shot. Let me try and take the life of a monk and see if this ancient wisdom has answers to these questions. You know, so that's when the shift happened. Yeah. That's beautiful. And, and when you summarized our work lives and how many hours we spend in our work days, I mean, that's a really alarming number when you when you yeah. do an audit like that. And I just want to say right now, I see nearly over 10,000 people that are live with us. So if you're live with us right now yeah. and you like something that Gorgopal Das says, press the like button. If he says something that you love, press the love button. And most importantly, press that share button because I want so many more people to be able to see his incredible, incredible insights. And if you have a question, 
please write a Q and a colon and a question in the comments because I'll be looking through on my phone for your questions as well. So if you have a question for Gogo Paldas, please do send that my way. Now, that's a really interesting thing because a lot of people today would consider that they want to start a company or they want to uh, start a new passion business or a venture yeah. or whatever it may be. What was it specifically, do you remember, what was an answer that the monk wisdom gave you that resonated with you so strongly? Was there a part of it that just really connected with you? Yeah, I think uh, I, I always feel that, you know, things like these, finding our passion, discovering our path is less an event and more a journey, mm. you know. And when we are taking up that journey, bits and pieces start unfolding to us as we take that journey. Mm -hmm. you know? So I don't even think that we can say that, okay, I've, I discovered it all. You know, it's, it's a path, it's a journey. And as we're taking that journey, more and more is revealed to us, more and more starts resonating with us. So when we take a path, we see how much is it kind of, you know, sinking in sync with our soul? How much is, in, is it in resonance with our soul? And based on that, then we take the next step. You know, so it's been a journey and I feel that's so true about life as well, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Dating, dating someone is an event, but a relationship is a journey, you know, or a wedding or an engagement is an event, but marriage is a journey. Starting a spiritual path is an event, you get into it, but staying on and having your discovery, the path of your discovery is, an, is a journey. So I feel that everything in life is a journey and more and more starts unfolding to us. Like someone asked Michelangelo, how does he make these beautiful sculptures? And he said, well, the sculptures already exist in this big chunk of marble. He said, I only chisel the excess marble off. So I feel finding our purpose and finding answers to our questions is a journey. Bit by bit of our darkness is chiseled off and more and more of our light shines forth. So this is what I found in the monastery that really resonated with me that they didn't give an answer saying, this is it. They said, okay, hey, it's a path. More and more will be discovered. And as you go on the path, you know, you will find your answers slowly as well. And I think it's a journey and it continues on. What a, what a brilliant answer. I think, I think we're all looking for this perfect event. We're all looking for yeah. this perfect moment in life. Like you rightly said, it's, yeah. an, it's, it's not an event. We're looking for an event but actually it's a journey and the analogy that you just gave of chiseling away. I mean, that creates such a beautiful visual in the mind because you stop thinking that it's just perfectly going to appear one day. You realize that it's going to take that patient determined approach. And so what a beautiful answer. Now, I, I remember the first time I heard you speak, which must've been around 15 years ago, and you've always been extremely eloquent, articulate, able to communicate truth in such a, a digestible way for, you know, I was, I was 18 then when I would have first met you yes. uh, around that time. <laughs> and this book does it so beautifully as well. And I wanted to dive into some of the areas of this book, if you're okay with that. Yes, and for sure. everyone who's listening and watching right now, I've put the links to everywhere you can get it. I've pinned them to the top of the comments. So you can get the book right now at Amazon. You can get it at Barnes and Noble. You can get it at IndieBound, Bookshop and Sounds True. All of the links are there. So if you're enjoying this discussion, then please, please, please go and grab a copy of this book. And we're going to dive into some of it now. So I want to look at some particular chapters that I picked out. And I wanted to talk about this chapter because it's, it's such a beautiful one. The first one that you start with when you talk about forgetting the keys. Tell us about, uh, and, I, and I don't want you to share stories from the book because I want to save them for people for sure. <laughs> uh, to, to buy the book. I, I want people to hear them. But tell us about this moment that I feel so many of us come today where we realize and we feel like you did stuck in our day to day. And I think this is a, I'm sure you see it in India. And when you travel across the world, I see it yes. in the United States. And when I travel across the world, that it feels like a lot of us get to a moment where we just feel stuck and we yeah. feel like we don't know what to do next. And, and we feel like we've forgotten the keys to happiness. We, we don't know where to start. What should someone do in that position when they feel stuck in their current job, their current relationships, where, where do they start from? Yeah, yeah. So just thank you very much, Jay, for that question. But I must say something before even I start answering this question. Jay has been saying that, you know, I'm eloquent and articulate and, you know, he's been saying 
with millions of followers and views on the internet. I mean, look at Jay. <laughs> He is he is a billionaire, <laughs> billionaire with billions of views and billions of people looking at him and watching him, and he's been a friend. And what an incredible! I mean, I've I heard him several times as he he said he was eighteen when I first met him, obviously. And as he as he grew up, I've been seeing him, you know, and this absolutely stunning wisdom, his absolutely amazing sense of delivery, the way he presents things, and more than his wisdom and his delivery it's just him as an incredible individual i mean such a genuine person i've seen him as a monk in the monastery as well to everybody who says they they didn't they don't know whether he was a monk or not i can definitely <laughs> say i've seen him as a monk in the monastery <laughs> i'm i'm glad i'm glad you switched uh, what you were going to say because i was about to start crying as you know uh, <laughs> oh, i i'm going to say shall i say this jay please I'm go ahead Jay is such. I mean, what a friendship we've shared, you know, over these fifteen years. But I must tell you this: that there's not been a single time that me and Jay have met and he's not cried. <laughs> and I was, I, I definitely wasn't going to share this, Jay. But since he said he was going to start crying, <laughs> I said I, I must say this now: what an amazing person. What an amazing person! But this is something that's just coming from my heart, and I had to say it before even answering that question. You know? <laughs> But yeah, you, it's so true that we can feel stuck in our lives, whether it's our work, whether it's a journey, or sometimes even people who are in the monastery when they realize that they don't belong there, mm -hmm. you know, can find themselves stuck in that place, isn't it? And and that's the beauty that we as human beings have. We're not trees. We don't have to remain in one place. Mm -hmm. You know, trees are rooted in one place. They have the roots, but we have legs. legs can move and they're not we're not just talking about physically moving we're talking about figuratively moving in life as well you know that if it's a toxic relationship whether it's a toxic job or even if it's a toxic being toxically situated in a monastery you know it's it's absolute injustice to our human potential to remain stuck we are not meant to be stuck we are meant to move on and we are meant to live a life which is worth living we are meant to have an experience which is ex absolutely uplifting fulfilling and satisfying you know so yes we the first symptom is to be extremely honest often times we are just fighting it back that no i belong here i belong to a toxic relationship we are in such a denial monks in a monastery who don't belong there are in absolute denial they know it's it's about my image how can i move out you know or people in a certain job because it's paying them well but everybody around is toxic the boss is toxic the colleagues are toxic but it's because it's just paying them well they just find out okay they just justify it it's fine to be there and they're in an absolute uh, mood of denial you know so the first step to move on is to be extremely honest and to be able to accept that i'm stuck if i don't accept i'm stuck there's no question of moving on if i'm still denying and fighting it but i mean what a horrible thing it is isn't it we would rather fight the real issue than fighting this inside <laughs> 50% of my energy goes in fighting this thing that oh no i belong here i belong here i belong here you know i would rather accept it and spend my 100% energy in dealing with the actual issue mm. so the first thing is to be absolutely honest and say okay hey i am stuck now what do i do mm. now if i am stuck then the second thing that i feel is necessary is to find a friend a guide a mentor somebody with whom i can confide and i can speak my heart you know because otherwise if i'm just trying to help myself it could sometimes be like quicksand the more i try to come out of it the more i get sucked in i mean definitely i must help myself certainly but there are sometimes limitations in how much i can help myself you know emotionally i feel completely overwhelmed sometimes because of what i'm going through and in such a situation i think it's such an asset to have somebody with whom we can open up mm. to whom we can you know share our hearts and confide in someone uh, uh the, the, the 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 tiny dragon asked the big panda you know or or rather big panda asked the tiny dragon said what's more important the journey or the destination the tiny dragon said the company <laughs> it's the company during the journey when we are moving towards the destination and to have that kind of company where we won't be judged 
we will we would be accepted for who we are with the problem we have there'll be a very high sense of confidentiality when we have friends like that or probably voice guides or mentors like those then that's where we go and open up that i i feel stuck here you know i need some help and with that help that comes from them it help is simply a facilitation obviously nobody is making a decision for ourselves we have to ultimately fly our own planes you know so that's when when we get those inputs from our friends or our guides at least there is some trigger now to think differently and then to act differently and then ultimately like i said earlier it's like the chiseling off of the excess marble that our our own discovery happens and we do make mistakes on the path we do make our own mistakes but fine we learn our lessons and we move on so yes we definitely don't want to be stuck we want to move this is the greatest injustice to our human potential what a beautiful answer i love that you began by just amplifying the need to be honest with ourselves uh, yeah. you know i think that that is such a difficult thing to do because the ego gets involved yes the mind gets involved and and i remember that in my own journey when when i left the ashram and the monastery uh, it was very much a a humbling experience to accept honestly okay. that i didn't feel that was my path and yeah. it was very difficult because the ego is trying so hard to hold on to this uh yes. this, this commitment that you've made yes and and you want it to be that way and you you are hoping and holding and it's almost like it hurts more because you're holding on so tight it's like if you're yes. holding on to something tightly and someone tries to open your hand uh yeah. it can cause so much pain and so i love that you say that it requires firstly just being honest with ourselves uh yeah. that this isn't working there are some great great questions coming in that i want to take uh this is a question coming in that says why does our mind always take us to the future as opposed to staying in the present i thought mm-hmm. that would be a great question that we should answer yeah i think uh our mind only does something that we condition it to anything that we habituate ourselves to we get we get very good at doing that mm. if if i start waking up early in the morning then if i ask how do i wake up early in the morning i've been doing it for the last 25 years <laughs> you know or or if i if, if you speak in a certain way jay the way you speak oh man you just you always nail it you know but you've been doing it for so long so whatever we practice for a long time is what we get conditioned to habituated to if we practice the wrong things we're going to get conditioned to that if we practice the right things we're going to get conditioned to that so if you constantly conditioned our mind to live in the past or in the future what would we expect it would be great at mm-hmm. you know our mind is only going to be great at something that we've been doing all the time so we are either brooding over the past or worrying about the future you know so unless we recondition our mind it's very difficult to stay in the present and the best way to recondition the mind is to start start with the small things to learn to be in the present like i was mentioning to someone the other day that the one thing that i do in my eating patterns is one meal a day i take just to myself wow every single day one meal is just to myself no phones no books no people to talk to because what that does is it just trains me to be in the present savor the food it's not about the food it's about no distractions training my mind to have no distractions you know nothing but food that just being present in that activity so it's just a small little thing but it's those small things that really lead to a very large impact on who we are so i think the mind tends to either go into the past or the future because we've been doing that and training the mind to do that for so long and unless we train the mind to now start being in the present how is it going to be in the present to expect that the mind will be in the present without getting it out of the conditioning of being in the past or the future is is just an impossibility and without training it with those little small things to be i used to i used to you know sing songs in the shower like most of us do <laughs> <laughs> and you have a great okay. voice you have a great come on, voice jay. Come, come on jay you just too kind man <laughs> you do you have a great voice <laughs> you know i would i would sing some devotional songs the monk songs obviously <laughs> the monk songs you know you know the songs we sing do you know the songs which monks sing <laughs> so i would sing some monk songs in the in the bathroom now the problem was at a point of time i realized that my mind is 
neither in the singing nor in the bathing. Ah. So I said, I'm not going to stop singing those songs. But while I'm bathing, I'm not going to sing those songs because I want to experience every drop of water that trickles down my body and be present in the experience of bathing. I stopped singing in the bathroom about five years back. You know? Wow. You know? And then the songs that I would sing, I come back to my room. And they're songs that are very sacred and special to me. So I spend that time. It's a prayer, right? So I spend that time singing that song later. But then I'm exclusively in it. So I think we just need to recondition our mind by starting with the small things uh, so that the conditioning of being in the past and the future is kind of, we slowly unwind from it and start learning how to be in the present. Absolutely, that's, that's, absolutely. Yeah. I, I think that's a, that's a great perspective. I think sometimes we can get so fixated on trying to change this very big thing of, oh, my mind's in the future and the past, but actually it's yeah. these small everyday habits like you yes. eat every day, you bathe every day. So if, if those two things you start doing differently, because yes. you do them every day, it just slowly, incrementally starts to recondition. Correct. That's a that's a beautiful way of looking. I love that. I want to read some of your uh, comments here. Anna O'Neill says, "Love this. Validating it's okay to free ourselves and let go and grow. Take that leap of faith." Brilliant comment. Thank you so much, Anna. Uh, looking at more of your comments here as well, we have this comment from. Eric, who says that this is brilliant. I'm really enjoying this conversation. Thank you to Gaur Gopal Das. That's fantastic. Thank you for sharing. Thank you, Eric. Eric, thank you. Really, really appreciate that. Uh, so many other fantastic comments and questions coming through. Keep them coming, everyone. And for those of you who have just joined us, we have over 9,000 people live right now. If you haven't yet gone and ordered a copy of The Way of the Monk, the links are pinned at the top of my comments. So if you're in the comments section, there's links there to Amazon, Barnes & Noble, IndieBound, Bookshop, and Sounds True. The book came out on 4th of August. So if you order it now, you will get it very, very soon, right? It's already out. This book that we're discussing today is already out. Uh, Gorgopal Das, I want to dive into another chapter that I had marked here that I want to go over. Sure. Uh, I'd love to hear about you, uh, and a lot of comments are about this topic too, is around relationships. Now, you give a lot of... Um, often, even you mentioned dating, but you, you, you advise so many people around love and relationships. You have so many people that come to you for guidance personally as well, not just on the internet, but uh, young uh, people that you guide in Mumbai and, and people from all different walks of life and across the world. Uh, what do you find is the number one reason why people have relationship issues, whether it's with a spouse, a partner, or, or even in family and friendship? What, what do you yes. find is the number one issue? Yeah, yeah. I think uh, what we're looking for in our relationships often is perfection. Mm. We're looking for a perfect person. Sadly, there's no perfect person in the world. You know, we can seek perfection, mm. but it's hard to be perfect as a, as a human being, you know. Like a lady went to an astrologer and said, I'm looking for a, I'm looking forward to getting married. And she said, uh, I, what do you call a guy who's like, you know, handsome, romantic, hardworking, enterprising, loves me, doesn't fight, gives me all the money for shopping, takes care of the kids, you know, A, B, C, X, Y, Z. What do you call a guy like this? The astrologer said, imagination of the mind. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what is the imagination of the mind it is to see that, you know, somebody will be perfect. So when we're talking about relationship, whatever relationship it may be, it's a package deal. Comes with the good and the bad side. And if, it, if somebody in a relationship, we see the other person, we ourselves have those as well. So I feel one of the key issues in any relationship, uh, especially between a guy and a girl, uh, you know, a boyfriend and a girlfriend or spouses, is uh, there's no complete acceptance of people for who they are, you know? There's such a great need because everybody comes with a baggage. Everybody's come with a baggage. Sometimes this, this traumas people are carrying with them. You know, people have been abused in the past. They've been in abusive relationships in the past and they're carrying a massive baggage with them. And what they need is empathy. What they need is a healing touch. But the problem is we start expecting perfection and we become judgmental over all the little flaws that are simply manifestations of an internal unhealed self. You know, 
there is an internal unhealed self there because and not because they are bad it's just because they have had a past which has been extremely traumatic so to cultivate empathy and to understand that people come with their baggages to to spend time not just to be understood but also to seek to understand them which needs communication which needs talking which needs spending time spending time not just not just to be romantic or not just to have fun or not just to chat about everything else about the world it's so funny and so absolutely paradoxical that when people meet they can talk about everything under the sun but themselves <laughs> we live in a world where people can talk about every show on netflix they can talk about everything on disney and everything everywhere they can talk about who's the trending sports star who's the trending rock star who's the trending hollywood or bollywood star which is fine that's a part of our life for sure nothing wrong with it but so much of the conversation revolves around this or of fashion and everything else we talk so less about ourselves mm-hmm. you know so it's so crucial in our relationship that we talk we spend time to understand each other and understand that everybody is coming with a baggage sometimes traumas different upbringings different psychophysical natures you know and then to say okay i need to accept them because the other person is accepting me i need to accept them as well and there will be certain aspects which are unacceptable so then that needs to be clear that we can't be stay in a relationship like that. Mm. you know so i think that's one of the key issues yeah. i think that that's a that's a brilliant brilliant answer because i i think it's also media and music videos and content and and films that have made us believe that this perfect love as you describe yeah, true. actually Absolutely. exists and and i think even when i i love what you said about how we're able to talk about everything and not ourselves i think that yes. is so yes. true because we don't really know ourselves and right. so we know more about the characters on tv than our own character absolutely and we just we just you're so right like that is such a good point because we we reflect and meditate more on the journey of that character and the actor and the actress and what they're doing as opposed to what yes. we're doing and that that is such a that's really resonated with me today i've never heard it put like that and i think that that is uh that is definitely what sets us up for a downfall everyone who's watching on facebook live right now what we're about to do is we're going to go live to Instagram and we're going to continue yeah. this conversation. <laughs> so we're not going to have the same conversation. I'm going to continue asking you <laughs> questions. I'm going to ask some of your questions. If you want to come and join us, you can join me on my Instagram page at @jshetty. Uh Gorgopal Das is going to come live with us on Instagram as well where we're going to continue talking about his amazing book, The Way of the Monk. Again, if you've already enjoyed the conversation thus far, which I'm sure you have, Don't hesitate make sure you go and grab a copy of the book it's amazing available on Amazon Barnes and Noble Indiebound Bookshop and Sounds True and all the links are pinned to the top this live is going to continue being on Facebook so if you didn't grab it in a few seconds once it's fully processed you can go back and find the link as well this is not going anywhere you can watch it and share it so if you've enjoyed this live please share it if you've really enjoyed it come and join us on Instagram and Gogopal Das if you're okay with that we will Uh, head yeah, over we'll to see each other just in yes. a while from yes. I'll just change my laptop and come back to my phone now <laughs> perfect i love it we'll Start see you there a couple of sec minutes and we'll yes. be back yes of course thank everyone so come and join us on instagram thank you, thank you so thank much you. gorgopal thank, thank you so much yes. such such a such a joy being with you thank let's, you great yeah let's continue thank you everyone come and join us on instagram and go and grab a copy of the book thank you <laughs>